Hello everybody, welcome back to another Hizzy lesson. Today we're going to be having a look at the daily life of some of the people within ancient Egypt. Last lesson, we got a little bit ahead, well I got a little bit ahead of myself. We were looking at the daily life of the farmers. This lesson we're going to have a look at another social pyramid and we're going to have a look at the pharaoh. Who the pharaoh is, what he does and what his role is. So the way this lesson is going to go, we've got some writing, we've got some images. We're going to read the writing. Look at the images. As we get further down, blah, 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 blah. There's going to be some questions. When we get to the questions, I'm going to do my best to, I might shift my face cam at that point. Ask you to pause the video, write the questions out in your workbooks, write the answers out in your workbooks. Workbooks. So we're going to make a start with our lesson. We're going to read through this together. Ancient Egyptian society was layered like a pyramid. At the top was the pharaoh, who was considered to be both a king and a god. So they worshipped him like he was a god and he was their king. So it was kind of like super important in their society. He wasn't just their king. He wasn't just their god. He was two in one. At the top, uh, no, no, beneath him was the vizier. He was like a prime minister who was in charge of almost everything. He was kind of like the pharaoh's, um, the pharaoh's guy that does all the all the work the pharaoh doesn't want to do. The pharaoh makes the decisions, gets to um, eat all the you know all of the fun feasts, and the vizier is the guy that gets it done. He's the worker. He gets done whatever the pharaoh wants. Then came the nobles, the priests, and scribes. So here we have nobles, priests. Scribes. They've also got the soldiers just here. And at the very bottom were the common people, like farmers, peasants, and slaves. Now you might recall last lesson we mentioned that whatever station you're born into is likely what you're going to be. So if you were born a nobleman, you're going to be a nobleman. Your if your dad was a nobleman, sorry, then you're probably going to be a nobleman. If your dad was a craftsman, you were going to be a craftsman. So I'm going to flick my mouse over to my other screen. I hope this does what I want it to. Perfect. I want you guys to pause the video here. I know we've drawn up a social pyramid in one of our last lessons. I want you to draw it out. Now you don't have to have all of the pictures, but I want there to still be a pyramid with these different layers and all of these different the names inside where they go. So it should have one, two, three, four, five, Six layers, slaves and farmers, craftsmen, soldiers and scribes, priests and nobles, vizier and pharaoh. So I want you to pause the video right here and get that done. While I try and turn my face cam back on. Where's my mouse? There it is. And there's my other screen. Boom and we're back. So now we're at nobles, priests, officials and scribes. Nobles were the wealthy class in Egypt, so that means they were the rich people. They owned land and lived a nice lifestyle, while their land was farmed by commoners. So they owned the land, and the commoners, the farmers, used to grow the crops, take care of the crops, and harvest the crops on the nobles' land. The priests controlled the temples, and that let them have a lot of power, because everyone wanted to please the gods. So they would offer up offerings to the gods, and so that they could get closer to or make their life a little bit easier, they would treat the priests of the time really well. Officials were in charge of administrating Egypt. So that means they were managing and directing people. So they're kind of like the people that do the government work. They were in charge of all of the small things, getting the stuff done, making sure that the things were built, that the taxes were collected and everyone was taken care of and happy. They ensured that the Pharaoh's wishes were carried out. Egypt's many scribes were ranked below the ruling class of the nobles, priests and officials, but were above the common people. They had been trained to read and write, so scribes were employed to keep records of Egypt, such as taxes. When we look at different points in history, we need to remember that not everyone lives the same way we do today. Ancient Egypt, not everyone could read and write. There was a class of people 
that were elevated above regular common people just because they could read and write. Then we have the ordinary people. Among the ordinary people, artisans or skilled, um, skilled I'm going to restart that part. Among the common people, artisans or skilled persons or craftsmen formed a large group. Young men learned their craft from their fathers, craftsmen included. So here's where we come back to the idea that you are what your father was and what his father was. So the father would train their children to take over their jobs. Now, when we look at all of the different um, artisans or the craftsmen, we have stonemasons. These were men who made temples, tombs, statues, and monuments. So they would make things out of stone. Painters. No extra points to anyone who guesses what they do. <laughs> they decorated the temples, tombs, coffins, and canopic jars. So they would quite often paint them. Woodworkers. You guessed it. They worked with wood. And they carved out furniture and other objects. Wig makers, and I swear if one of you makes a joke, <laughs> they were the people that made false beards and wigs. Metal workers worked with metal. Weavers would work with different fabrics and weave things. Some of you guys might remember last term, we practiced weaving using the, um, the long thin leaves. Musical instrument makers, papyrus makers, so this was their, their form of paper, and jewelers. Peasants were the largest group. They were mostly farmers who worked the lands owned by the pharaoh, priests and nobles. Most of the food that they produced went to their landlords, landlords so the nobles that owned the land, or were paid in taxes. Their lives were an unchanging cycle of plowing, planting and harvesting. And you might remember last lesson we looked at what these three um, terms consisted of what they meant. So when we plow the land, we're looking at making a bit of a hole, we're breaking up the land, giving it some a bit of aeration and giving the seed somewhere to go. Planting is putting the seeds into the holes that you made. And harvesting is when we collect the plants once they're fully grown. So, in your workbooks, if I can get this angled, no, no, too much. All right, I'm going to kill the face cam. Give me a second. Wrong one. <laughs> no, it's not going to do it. No. All right, I'm just going to drag my face cam to the side. All right, I'm going up here now. Views different from up here. <laughs> In your workbooks, I want you to write, where's my mouse now? Question and answer. Questions one through 10. What was Egyptian society like or what shape was it in? Who was like the Prime Minister of Egypt? Who was the wealthy class in Egypt? Who worked in the temples? Why did the priests have a lot of power? What did the officials do? Who were the scribes and what did they do? What different type of people were classed as ordinary people? List three different crafts young men could learn in ancient Egypt, and what did they do? I'm going to give you a bit of a tip. When we're looking at this, we're looking at woodworkers, stonemasons, etc. And what was the largest group of ordinary people? We're going to focus on these 10 questions. In your workbooks, copy out these 10 questions, write them, question and answer. Once you're finished with your work, take a photo of it, upload it to the Google Classroom. We might call this episode, this this episode, this lesson a little bit short. I want you guys to focus on what we've looked at today. If there is a point where you didn't understand something or you need an extra bit of, you need some more support in anything, please feel free to email me or your classroom teacher. Um, once you finish the work, take a photo of your work and put it up on the Google Classroom. Remember, we're still here to answer any questions to give you any support or any help you guys still need. Thank you all for watching. I'm going to move my mouse over to where I need it before I end the lesson. Thank you all for watching. If you need help, hit us up and I'll see you next time.